Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be talking about deployment. Every military wife's least favorite word, however, it is one that we hear quite often. So the video today is going to be more of a story time. I figured that the very first video I put out should be mine and Brad's very first experience with deployment. However, I do plan on doing a few other videos kind of centered around deployment D things. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get this video started. So before we get into like the nitty gritty of things, let me just kind of lay the groundwork for those who don't know. Brad and I were married when I was 17 years old. I was a few months shy of 18 and he was 20 at the time. Um, no, it was not because I was pregnant or because he was joining the military. Those things happened many years later. <laughs> um, so I basically went from being under the care of my mom to being under the care of my husband. So I didn't really have that in between time where you essentially learn how to take care of yourself. So I really did not know how to be on my own. Fast forward a few years, I now have two children, very young children. Brody was only 18 months when Brad deployed, so a year and a half, and Peyton was two months old. So very, very, very young babies. And now my husband, the person that I rely on incredibly much, too much, is going to be leaving. So that was really hard to deal with already. But on top of that, back then I had really bad, I mean, I still have anxiety, but I had really bad untreated anxiety, keyword untreated. I didn't know how I was going to manage being alone, but being alone with two small children on top of that. So now that you guys kind of know the background to that. So Brad left in June of 2014. Brody was 18 months, like I said, and Peyton was two months old. And the days leading up before he left were probably one of the worst things about deployment because you know it's coming up, it's so close, and you kind of just want to get it over with. Like you, you don't want your spouse to leave, but at the same time, you just want to hurry up and you know, get this thing started. You want to be able to start the countdown, get into your routine. The anticipation was just terrible, honestly. So the days leading up to deployment were not fun, but then the day of deployment, I'm not sure how other deployments go because like I said, this was our first, but Brad kept getting called in. They would be like, okay, everybody bring, you know, come back to the company. I'm not sure if it was just for checks or maybe that they thought they were leaving. Um, I can't really remember, but I think we got called in like two, two, at least two times. And so we would kind of go there anticipating that this is okay. This is it. This is the moment we are going to be saying goodbye to each other. And then we would get there. He would go talk to whoever he needed to talk to. Everybody's standing around waiting all, you know, wives, children, things like that. And then the guys would come back out and be like, Oh, it's not time to leave yet. They said we can go back home for a couple more hours. So then it was like, oh, okay, like, oh, you mentally prepared yourself to say goodbye and everything. And so that was really hard. <laughs> when it was time to finally say goodbye to Brad, I remember it as if it was yesterday. Um, watching him say goodbye to the babies was very hard, especially because they obviously have no clue what's going on. I mean, Peyton's two months old. She barely knows the world around her. Brody though, like, I mean, he just thought he was getting a hug from daddy. Like he didn't know the extent of that hug and these, the goodbye and, and everything. And so that was really hard to watch Brad hold back tears saying goodbye to the kids, especially. Um, I definitely tried to be strong for Brad and put on like a brave face and stuff. However, obviously a few tears slip out and stuff, but I was trying my hardest to hold everything in until he was gone because I didn't want, I didn't want him to be left with the memory of me being like a sobbing mess when he was gone. I wanted him to feel like I was confident in this, like I will be okay, I can take care of it, even though in my brain I was like, oh God, please don't leave me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, saying goodbye to him was really hard. 
I will never forget watching him walk away through the gate um, that they went through. Um, I will never forget that. That was so very hard. And as soon as I got into the car and drove away, <laughs> that is when I just burst into tears. I, I'm sure people who passed me driving by were probably like, yikes. <laughs> So the next thing that I think was probably another just a hard hit, I guess, was actually coming home. I was not anticipating what that would be like, but I came home and I sat down on the couch with the babies and it was so quiet. And I just remember like looking around and thinking like, okay, this is my life for the next nine months okay <laughs> so yeah that was that was hard and definitely not something that I anticipated on feeling so I don't really remember a whole lot about the beginning I know my mom came and visited me at one point shortly after Brad left and that was great it was so nice having somebody there having something to look forward to for one to my mom coming and then having somebody there to help me, to talk to, just, just having somebody there was really nice. However, I do remember dropping her off at the airport and then coming home once again and just seeing how quiet my house was. That was another like, that knocked me down a peg again. So I'm not sure if I had already been experiencing these symptoms before my mom came or if it was after she came, but because of my anxiety, and this is going to be a little TMI, but just wanna be, you know, completely honest and upfront about everything with you guys, but my anxiety made me physically ill. I basically lived my life around having to use the bathroom. I, I literally had to plan my life around the bathroom. My anxiety made me so sick. My stomach hurt constantly. And yeah, I mean, I, I had to use the bathroom all the freaking time. So as you can imagine with two small children, that was difficult, especially when, you know, a brand new baby needs you frequently. That was really hard. I did not leave the house a whole lot. One, because I didn't want to, but two, I couldn't like, I mean, even things like going to the grocery store were hard. I lived down the street from the commissary and I would make my grocery lists in order of aisle. I memorized aisles. <laughs> That's how planned it had to be. So I would make my grocery list by the aisle, use the bathroom, get everybody in the car. I would drive the short drive to the commissary and I would speed walk. Like I would walk with a purpose, just hurry up, get my stuff and get out of there because as soon as I got to the commissary, my stomach would just start turning and it was terrible pain. I would, I can't even describe to you how bad it hurt, but there were many of times that I thought I was gonna have to leave my cart in the middle of the store and go home because I was, I couldn't I couldn't do it so I would get in get out go home I couldn't even put the groceries away I would have to use the bathroom immediately and that is how I lived a good chunk of the first part of deployment honestly uh, it was very hard so on top of my anxiety issues on top of missing Brad Peyton had some issues of her own um, towards the middle end of deployment, I want to say, is when we would go to the doctor constantly. We would be there, I want to say like every every other week, something like that. But definitely a couple times a month, I would make trips to her doctor because I, I still honestly don't even know what was wrong with her. Um, but she would just cry in the middle of the night and... She would just sound like she was in so much pain and I just, I, I honestly don't even know how to explain it to anybody anymore. No, it wasn't colic. 
no, you know, like whatever you're thinking, it wasn't it. My doctors, we tried so many different things, different formulas, different medicines, different things. Peyton also had some kind of like breathing issues and stuff as well, but that he wasn't thinking that that was the problem. And I just, I honestly can't even tell you anymore. I think I've probably blocked out a lot of those <laughs> memories as well. But basically I was at the doctor with her all the time. The only places that I ever went during that deployment were the commissary and the doctor's office. So eventually her doctors referred us to an ENT. They also couldn't really find what was seeming to cause the issue. I kind of have my own thoughts on maybe some of the things that it could have been, but we'll never know now. Uh, luckily towards the end of deployment, of course, right before Brad's coming home, she, whatever it was, stopped. She was not having the weird sounds. She wasn't crying like she was in pain in the middle of the nights anymore. And um, yeah, so that, that time was just incredibly hard for me. I didn't tell anybody except for my mom, I think, about it. I kind of I kind of hinted at it to others maybe by being like, "Can you please come visit me? Like I need somebody to come visit me." But it, nobody could and stuff and I mean, I re honestly, I looking back at it, back at it now, I really should have been like, "I need help." Somebody somebody come help me, please, <laughs> you know? Um, but I didn't. I'm sure other mothers out there can understand kind of that reluctance to ask for help. You don't want people to judge you. You don't want, you just, you don't, you don't want to ask for help. You just, you don't. Um, unfortunately, I never did. I did have some friends that I probably could have asked for help as well. However, I figured they were also going through the deployment. They also had their own children, so I'm not gonna burden them with my problems. So I I didn't, I just didn't ask for help. So I struggled with my anxiety and Peyton's issues all alone. And I just, I was not in a good place. My mom, you know, tried to help as much as she could with as, you know, from being far away, same with Brad. He did everything he possibly could from thousands of miles away. <laughs> but yeah, so one of the things my mom suggested was to get out of the house because like I said, I had only been going to basically the commissary and Peyton's doctor appointments. She was like, you need to get out of the house. You have to do something go walk around the block anything you just need to get yourself out of the house so one of the best purchases that I ever made was this backpack um, I'm like you need this backpack in your life you do buy this backpack <laughs> so I would put Brody in this backpack and Peyton would be in her car seat stroller combo thing and I started walking um, at first I I planned it around the kids' nap time because I didn't want, you know, any anything to kind of distract from the walk, I guess. I didn't want to have to be like, ugh. You know, I just wanted a set time where I forced myself to get out of the house for a short period of time. So at first, I just walked around the block, um, and then eventually I started to walk more. And I, I really started to enjoy this outing like I started looking forward to it and believe it or not um, <laughs> it got to the point where I would walk for the whole three-hour nap that my kids slept so I would I mean I have like Facebook memories pop up where I'm like I walked six miles today like <laughs> I just walked and I didn't just like leisurely walk I would walk quickly uh, sometimes I would even jog as you know you can kind of do with a child on your back and a stroller but it became 
fun for me and I honestly didn't even think of, of it as exercise. It wasn't until I put on a shirt one day and I remember like looking down and being like, this used to be very tight on me and it was so baggy and I like it almost felt like it happened overnight which I know that it didn't but that is just kind of it just one day I put on the shirt and I was like oh I have lost weight so that is when it hit me that wow this is beneficial for my brain but it's also beneficial for my body and so that kind of became my new passion during that deployment I started making better food choices which food was kind of hard anyway because like I said I was sick you know the whole first part of deployment but once I started exercising and stuff those symptoms went away I mean I was still very anxious but my stomach didn't hurt constantly anymore which was amazing um, I did start venturing out a little bit, made some trips to Walmart and things like that. I didn't do anything crazy, you know, don't get me wrong. But then I started going to like things on post. Like one of my friends talked me into going to the Apple Day Festival that they had there. And I remember the whole time being at that festival having to keep pulling my pants up because they were so loose. And I just, having, having that going for me just really... It just gave me something to look forward to all the time. I was excited to go on my walks. I was excited to work out. I just, I felt like a new person inside and outside. So that was really great. And then on top of that, I was also discovering that I could take care of myself. I, I didn't need to be taken care of. I was doing okay, you know? Yes, I had my my moments and stuff like that but this was the first time I have ever been on my own and I was okay. That is one thing I am extremely thankful for about this deployment is it gave me my independence because I did not have that before. I relied on everybody else except for myself and this deployment gave me it gave me my independence and I am so, so grateful for the person that this deployment made me into. It really, it was really good for me, honestly, um, which is really weird to say about a deployment, but just, it really shaped me as a new person and I, w I was just so excited for Brad to come back to this whole new woman. <laughs> so I actually made this collage. Uh, it was us at the beginning of deployment and then us towards the very end of deployment and as you can see we all changed a lot. I definitely changed <laughs> a lot. So yeah I was just I was so excited for Brad to come home and see his new wife. <laughs> So yeah, towards the end of deployment got a lot better for me. We finally got into the double digits of deployment ending was really exciting. Um, the end of deployment was really hard too because you were just like, oh, it's so freaking close, but it's just not quite there yet. That last week especially, drug on forever, forever. I remember making his signs. I had a lot of fun making his signs. I'm really into that kind of a thing anyway, so crafty with things like that. So yeah, I don't know, I can't remember if it shows in the picture or not, I'll have to look, but I had a leftover tube from wrapping paper from Christmas, and so it, was, it wasn't like one of those flimsy ones, it was actually a, like a hard one, and so I taped that to the back of it because I wanted to be able to hold my sign up for Brad to see up over the crowd and stuff like that. So that was fun to make, that kind of kept me busy for, I think I spread it out over two nights just to kind of give me something to do. The day that Brad came home from deployment, he actually didn't get in until later that evening. It was like 10 p.m. when the homecoming ceremony was, so I had all day to just wait and wait and wait. I remember getting ready for the ceremony and I just remember so many butterflies. Like, I felt like I was about to go on my first date again. I could not believe that after nine months I was finally going to physically see Brad again. I was so nervous, so happy, so excited. Just every single emotion 
I feel like I was feeling. I could not wait. So when we got there, I just remember going in and sitting down in the bleachers and just the excitement that was in that room was, you could just feel it. Everybody was so excited. It was just such a good atmosphere to be in. And then I remember, I remember getting a text from Brad saying, I'm here. And I could not believe that after all this time, we were finally in the same place. He was like, all we had separating us was a wall, you know? And I just remember my heart beating out of my chest. So for those who have not experienced a homecoming ceremony, they bring all the soldiers in and they're lined up and they have like a little recasing of the flags. I'm pretty sure, I honestly, I don't remember. I just remember thinking the whole time, give me my husband, give me my husband, give me my husband. <laughs> but they do, they have like, they, they kind of like talk for a second and stuff like that. So everybody files in and I'm just frantically searching for Brad. I don't see him. Um, but at the same time, I kind of don't want to see him because I know as soon as I lock eyes with him, I'm going to want to run to him. And obviously you can't until they release them. So, uh, and you could just feel everybody just aching to run to their loved ones and can't yet. <laughs> Finally, you hear them say, okay, you know, go for it. And just you have the guys in their lines and then all of us in the stands and stuff and everybody just merged. And it was just a mass of people, just everybody trying to find each other. And I I couldn't go out into the crowd because obviously I had my two still very small children. Brody was two at this time and Peyton was he came home in February and Peyton was gonna turn one in April. So, still, you know, very young. So I stayed at my spot on the bleacher and I'd chosen the bottom seat on the edge of the bleachers. So I was accessible, you know, but I just remember I couldn't see him and I'm holding up my sign as high as I can and I'm just, where are you? And I'm not sure if it actually happened like this, but this is what it felt like. This is how I remember it. But it just felt like I'm looking for him and all of a sudden the crowd parted and there he was after so long. And I just, I saw him and I burst into tears. It was every single emotion I had felt during that deployment. The hardship, like I just released everything at that moment and it was great. I honestly will never forget that homecoming. The homecoming ceremony made deployment 100% worth it. We got to have a first kiss again. Not many people get that opportunity and it was amazing. Just having your spouse be gone for nine months and then finally home with you again, it's, you, it's like it was almost like meeting each other for the first time again, but you know each other and things like that. So it was honestly, it was just magical. It was magical. All right, guys, that is going to be the end of today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching my little story time. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. I would love to have you join us here. I post all the time and I post a lot of different types of videos as well too. So yeah, I would love to have you join us. Make sure you follow me on Instagram as well. I'm always posting on there. I love interacting with you guys. So leave me a comment down below on maybe some deployment questions you have or deployment themed videos maybe you are wanting to see. And yeah, I guess that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye.